think this guy is our private sector or something. So you know almost all of them, you can even recognize from which organization they are. <laughs> it's very hard. I, I met a lot of guys even though I arrived a little late. Yeah. But you can see on some equipment, some of the scarves, that you recognize some of them. You met them. Even though I did not fight with them. Okay. Uh, well. One second. It's uh, my commanding officer. But what about the next picture, see? Uh, yep. It is the point of uh, fighting. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was too late. I never actually took part of this. I'm not much of a fighter with sticks and stones. So you saw it on TV? I did. It's brave to go against all of these policemen with sticks and stones, nothing more. And they were bastards. Yeah. Well... And that, uh, this is the picture oh, yeah. this I remember. of memory, yeah. yeah, the picture of memory. And uh, do you know some other sweet guys uh, who, I, I don't want to say died here, who took part in this event? <clears throat> Maybe some Ukrainian, but our organization, it's called the Swedish Volunteer of Ukraine. We came uh, straight after the big fighting, so maybe 10 of us came helped fight corruption three or four days after Yanukovych fled. Yeah. But the flowers I remember well. All of this place was full of them. My name is Mike and I'm from Sweden. Yeah. Right now I fight with the battalion also. My, my mom, ah, she's used to me doing stupid things. So. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm an active man, so she basically said, uh, come home alive, and when you're done, we have some dinner. And that's about it. Oh, I've been in almost all of the cities, Kharkiv, Odessa, Donetsk, Luhansk, uh, all of these. Even not now, when there is actually armed forces in Donetsk and Luhansk, but before it, when it was just fist fight. What do people in Sweden think about uh, right now Putin is not a very popular guy because uh, two days ago some uh, Russian uh, Su-24 actually went into Swedish airspace. So uh, he was planned on before. Oh uh, yeah, he's been in Sweden many times with, uh, with airplanes and submarines. But now I don't know. He's going crazy. You think it's crazy? Yes. Uh, Maybe not. Maybe he just, I don't know, the, the totalitarian mind man. Yeah, yeah but uh, he, can, uh, he cannot win this war, how bad he even wants. I think he threatens basically all European countries. He's got an army, huge army. Yeah, but he's not bigger than the European army. Well, and but it's European... An, uh, it's an old army. Maybe, yeah, this is true, but the European army uh, is far. <laughs> Putin yeah. is close. But still, you know, uh, it's a big army, but uh, our little battalion together with some of the na national, no, the border patrol, kicked his ass in Nova Sovsk. And we were not many guys. Did you fight in Nova Sovsk, yeah? Yes. To, you fight to Russians? Oh, properly it's, to oh, Russians. oh, it's only Russians. Maybe one oh, or two idiots Russians, really? uh, from DNR, yes. Uh, some of them is actually from the Kuban Cossack. Kuban Kazakh, yeah, 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 I get it, Kuban Kazakh. Yeah. So uh, are they are really so brave as, as, as they declare? Well, they are not bad soldiers, but as any, they all die. <laughs> they can be many, but the end is always the same. So oh, I have many different types of rifles, depending on our mission. But you're a sniper? Uh, I'm a recon soldier foremost and uh, a sniper. So uh, sometimes I go with a suppressed uh, AK with the name point. Yeah. And uh, when we were fighting in and around Ilovaisk, I used uh, a really big caliber sniper rifle. When we fight in Mariupol, I used an old, uh, more of a sharp shooter weapon. It's a Russian SVD. SVD? Yeah. So you use it? Yeah, I did. It's not a bad weapon, but it's not a sniper rifle. 
Oh really? But we used to call it sniper rifle. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know, it's very bad. To, you can use it effectively maybe 600 meters, but above that... 600, really? Yeah. But what is uh, the distance for your best rifle? Uh, it's uh, my Remington 338 Laupa Magnum. With that, I, in Ukraine at least, I made a kill shot for 1410 meters. 1410 meters, almost one and a half kilometers. How many people did you shoot? Oh, <laughs> too many. Too Way many. too many. Uh, death is actually, it's something really private. Uh, I, had, yeah, yeah, it's, I had the question, I don't know, maybe a hundred times. Even my own mother asked, how many have you killed? And it's okay to speak with your friends who have been in battle with you. All right, yeah, I don't ask, yeah. uh, but uh, about the but emo we, emotional uh, yeah. side of that. Uh, we killed a lot. For example, uh, during the heavy fighting of uh, Shirokina, our um, heavy machine gunner, he has the ASU, it's 20.3 millimeter anti-aircraft gun used for basically shooting at armored Kamases and uh, BTRs. So with that, uh, two armed uh, Kamases were destroyed with about 40 soldiers in each. So only in that short fight, 80 Russian soldiers were killed. You never get prepared for for death. You think that uh, you are ready to face it after the first time someone dies, but it still strikes you very badly. For example, in uh, in Ilovaisk, two very young men died. Mm. I liked a lot. They were good friends and good soldiers. But were they the Ukrainians? Yes, they were Ukrainian. Uh, really good guys, but in Ilovaisk. Yeah, they were going to clear some of the outskirts of Ilovaisk, and were ambushed by um, separatist Russians. You can call them what you want. Uh, someone threw a grenade, and one of the young guys, he was only 18, uh, wants to protect his group, so he lays down on the grenade. And his friend lay down next to him because they were a battle pair. And he didn't want to leave his friends, so the both of them died. 